I'm Christian Filber, 46 years from Austria. I'm a kind of holistic thinker and reformer of the economy. I've written 15 books and initiated uh, two movements. One was critically uh, with the globalization, the present type of globalization, and out of this movement emerged the economy for the common good, which started in 2010 from Austria, Alto Adige and south of Germany, and today has spread to some 30 countries in the world. company or any other organization can be a money and profit machine and damage the common good on all levels, the environment, the social cohesion, democracy, gender relations and human dignity. Or it can increase and improve all these fundamental values which are the actual goals of the economy. This means first we have to decide what is the economy about. There are two major possibilities. One is the ancient Greek oikonomia. There the overarching goal is the good life for all or the common good. This is a true oikonomia and this is what we are advocating for. And the opposite possibility is to uh, increase money or uh, accumulate capital. It's krematistike or today we call it capitalism. Most uh, of all democratic constitutions have decided in favor of oikonomia. The problem is we are not measuring the achievement of the actual goal, the common good. We are measuring the increase of capital with means, with financial profit or with GDP, which is also a monetary indicator. That's why our proposal is to switch to a common good assessment for investments, a common good balance sheet for companies, thanks to which they show how much they contribute to the fulfillment of these fundamental values and the common good product for the national economy in order to really measure the achievement of uh, our uh, most noble goals from health uh, to flourishing relationships to a healthy environment to functioning democracy to peace or uh, satisfaction and happiness. You always need three things if you strive for a big system change. First, you need a very clear and attractive vision where we want to go from uh, today. Second, um, a, a big picture is not, not good enough if you don't have very small steps for companies, for municipalities, for private persons and for universities, for instance, to uh, implement the vision step by step. We have uh, developed several prototypes, most importantly the common good balance sheet which ha has been adopted by not only hundreds of companies but also cities and universities. They are going in tiny steps towards their larger vision. Third condition is that uh, doing this they uh, must not fail within the current system. We have now a first scientific study from the University of Valencia which has investigated 206 companies and other organizations that already have implemented uh, the common good balance sheet and the result is that of course their ethical uh, achievements and performance is improving dramatically but the, the second good message is that their financial performance is at least not getting worse is even getting slightly more positive it's viable it's realistic and we can do the first steps within the current system uh, always envisioning the the long term uh, perspective on the horizon. The first thing I have in mind is that Italy is already a role model in creating um, more ambitious laws than other countries. I'm thinking of cooperatives, I'm thinking of uh, so Societa Benefit, I'm thinking of uh, the first definition of ethical banks in a national law, which I'm quite jealous of. So why wouldn't it be possible that Italy is the first country that uh, decides that uh, with the same clarity that we have created the financial balance sheet, why not with the same uh, consequence create a legally binding ethical balance sheet, which has a, a measurable and comparable result, 
which is audited externally by the Common Good Auditor, a figure which we have already created. And now, most importantly, the result is visible on all products of that company, better the Common Good balance sheet or ethical balance sheet result, the less taxes this company pays, or it gets priority in public procurement, or it uh, can trade more freely than uh, companies that have a poorer result. Today, the good doers, they have a competitive disadvantage, but this would turn, thanks to these incentives, into a competitive advantage. And why would not Italy be the first country in the European Union to apply such a law?